Minister of Transport. They will be providing an update on the ongoing situation with the uh, truckers' convoy protest. Uh, and for reporters on Zoom, uh, if you want to ask a question, uh, raise your hand uh, during the, while the ministers are talking, and then when we come to the question and answer period, I'll be able to call on you. Ministers, Minister Blair. Well, good afternoon. Bon uh, Thank you, Elizabeth, and thank you all for joining us here today. Um, I, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that I am speaking to you today from the traditional territory of the Mississauga of the Credit. I'm very pleased to be joined by my colleagues, Minister Algabra and Minister Medicino, to provide you all with an update on the important work that's been going on in response uh, not only to the, the protests taking place in the city of Ottawa, but a number of other significant uh, protest activities and blockades that are also taking place across the country. I'd like to begin, if I may, by simply providing Canadians with reassurance, however. Notwithstanding the protest taking place that's been so impactful on the people of Ottawa, people who, li who live and work in, in the area of, 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 the, of, of the parliament where, where this protest is taking place, have been significantly impacted. They've been subject to acts of thuggery and, 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 and disrespect. You know, crimes have been committed. And we, we, I want to acknowledge how very difficult that has been for all of the people who've been impacted by this. But I also want to provide reassurance to Canadians throughout this protest. The government of Canada has continued to do its job. Parliament is meeting. Parliamentarians are, are, are in, in the House and, and participating. And, and the government of Canada continues to do its important work to serve all Canadians from coast to coast to coast. Last night, Minister Mendicino and I hosted the second meeting of the trilateral table with Mayor Watson and his officials. The Prime Minister also spoke with Mayor Watson yesterday afternoon to reaffirm our government's support for the City of Ottawa to ensure that we provide all of the help that they need from us in order to deal with the protests taking place within their city. We are working very closely with our municipal partners to ensure that the Ottawa Police Service has the resources that they need to enforce the law, to, to restore public order and to bring this unlawful protest to an end. I'd also like to take the opportunity to to recognize the Ontario Provincial Police Service, who has been providing assistance to Ottawa for the last two weeks, alongside the RCMP. But I also need to emphasize that we need political leadership of all of government in order to work together to resolve this crisis. This occupation requires all of us to come together to use all of the authorities are available that are available at our disposal. Many of the legis legislation and authorities um, to, to deal with this unlawful protest reside in the Provincial Highway Traffic Act and Municipal Bylaws. And, and of course, it is the province of Ontario and the Solicitor General who have ultimate responsibility for policing and the maintenance of public safety in the province. Invitations have been extended to Minister Jones and her officials, and we, we are very hopeful and confident that they will be joining us at our next meeting. We all have a job to do. We all have a responsibility to work as partners in public safety and to address the crisis that is not only at the heart of our nation's capital, but also starting to impact very significantly essential supply lines and, and jobs right across the country. As we monitor the situation in Ottawa, we are also seized with what's happening at the Ambassador Bridge in Windsor, in Coots, Alberta, and in other places across the country. Truckers who have kept our shelves stocked throughout the pandemic are currently being blocked or slowed down while carrying essential goods into our country and from our factories to their markets. These truckers who have been heroes throughout the pandemic are by being unlawfully stopped and impeded from doing their jobs. And let us be clear, the impact of these unlawful blockades well, goes well beyond those borders. Goods that are not getting to factories so that, so that, for example, our automotive industry is able to produce the goods and services that support our economy. The, the men and women who work in those factories are facing significant impacts on their jobs, their ability to do to do their work, but also to support their families. And so, while while we uh, all work to collectively hard together to manage the, the effect of these blockades, let's keep in mind the innocent Canadians who are being hurt by this. And and is as long as those blockades continue to slow down goods and services, and I'm, I'm sure my colleagues will speak more of this, all Canadians will be hurt by the actions of these few. These blockades are unlawful. The law needs to be upheld. I very much respect the efforts of our law enforcement officials to bring about a peaceful resolution to this. But I would urge all of those who are engaging in this unlawful activity, think about the people that you are truly hurting, and stop. 
open those roads, open those bridges, and let people go back to their, to their lives. Let me be very clear. The Ambassador Bridge is a vital artery to our country. And it's a vital artery in our supply chain. It's central to, to the functioning of our economy and to serving all Canadians. The blockade must end before further damage occurs. These demonstrations are, in fact, very harmful. I want to assure all Canadians that our government will continue to work with and support the police of jurisdiction in managing and quickly ending these blockades. And as we've said all week, throughout the past two years, and for that matter, throughout every aspect of this pandemic, this has been extremely difficult for all Canadians. We understand your frustration. We share your, your, your hope that we will quickly come uh, through this pandemic and re return to a, a life of normalcy where we can all enjoy um, our, our lives, go about our business, and, and, and engage in things that, that make life in Canada so important. No one wanted this pandemic to, to happen, but by coming together, by being decent to one another, by respecting each other, by following the public health safety guidelines that have been put in place, we've helped all Canadians get through this. It's the Canadian way. I'd like to thank you all very much for, for your time and your patience, and I'll now pass things over to my colleague, Minister Al Gabra. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Blair, and uh, hello, everyone. Bonjour à tous. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that I'm speaking to you today from the traditional territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. The current illegal blockades across the country have significant economic implications for our supply chain and our jobs. Ces blocages ont des impacts These blockades important. have important impacts. In the last two days, I've met with the Canadian Trucking Alliance, the Canadian Vehicle Manufacturers Association, the Automotive Parts Manufacturers Association, and the Retail Council of Canada. And they're all telling me the same thing. The situation must stop because the consequences are enormous. This has to stop. Current illegal blockade at the Ambassador Bridge border crossing prevents truckers from being able to transport essential goods to Canadians. The 4,000 trucks a day normally enter Canada over this bridge have been stopped. The Ambassador Bridge is the busiest crossing in Canada, handling over $350 million a day in merchandise trade. The auto sector brings in millions of goods every day over the bridge as part of its just-in-time delivery of parts to auto plants in southern Ontario. But it's not just auto jobs and other manufacturing jobs that are at risk. This blockade is forcing some factories to send workers home. It's interfering with Canadians' ability to earn a living and access essential goods, including food from grocery stores. A significant amount of central Canada's produce and other fresh food crosses at that point of entry. And to be honest, I find it ironic that the same people who were trying to sell Canadians fake stories about empty shelves are now the ones causing these shelves to go empty. This is an illegal economic blockade against the people of Ontario and against all Canadians. Please, to all those that are at those illegal blockades, go home. Rentrez à la maison. Go I'm home. also asking those who are blocking the border at Coots in Alberta to go home. We are reaching out to the government of Ontario as our two governments need to work together to end this illegal economic blockade against the people of Ontario. I will also meet with my counterpart, uh, with my counterpart from Alberta, Minister Sani, again this afternoon to continue our collaboration. The federal government has always been there, but we also need the cooperation of all levels of government. And here I call on the government of Ontario to join us in the hard work of securing an end to these illegal blockades in several Ontario cities and to apply the law. Thank you, everyone. Merci. And now I'll pass on the mic to my colleague, Minister Medici. 
Merci, Omar. Uh, bon après-midi, and I too would like to acknowledge that I'm joining you virtually from the territories of the Algonquin people. I want to thank everyone for joining us today, as well as my colleagues for expanding a little bit on the ongoing situation here in Ottawa, uh, in Alberta, at the Coots official port of entry, and more recently now at the Ambassador Bridge in Windsor. I want to also take a moment to thank all the members of the law enforcement uh, who are responding to the uh, convoys, uh, and in particular, the members of the RCMP uh, who have been adding resources uh, where appropriate and as much as possible to support local law enforcement uh, with the uh, primary responsibility of enforcing public safety. Um, our message today is, is very simple, um, that the federal government will continue to provide uh, reinforcements, tangible, concrete reinforcements uh, through the RCMP wherever we can. Um, we are doing so uh, in Alberta, and very recently um, I approved a request at the recommendation of the RCMP commissioner uh, to uh, allow for additional reinforcements to be provided um, at Coots. Um, we are also providing concrete, tangible assistance to the Ottawa Police Service, um, and we will be expanding on that in a few moments. And we are also uh, responding to other situations as they emerge. Um, we have started to see uh, a restoration of life that looks somewhat more no normal in Ottawa, uh, and that has been done again with the uh, with the cooperation of law enforcement. We're seeing more tickets issued, uh, ongoing criminal investigations. Uh, we're seeing structures come down. Um, it is being, it does look quieter and calmer. But even as we have made some hot headway in Ottawa, uh, we've seen an illegal blockade emerge in Windsor at the Ambassador Bridge. I wanna be clear, those participating in the convoy are hurting Canadians. They pose serious dangers for the economy and they are breaking the law and no one is above the law. Whatever the frustrations, disagreements, any of those who are participating in the convoy may have with the government's strategy, not only the federal government, but the provincial government and other governments may have with the strategy out of the pandemic. None of that justifies breaking the law. None of that justifies continuing to participate in a convoy, which is hurting Canadians. And th these are not abstract principles. We're talking about farmers and ranchers in Alberta who can't sell their meat in the US because they no longer have the ability to go through the Coots Sweetgrass border crossing. We're talking about retail employees in Ottawa who for quite some time now have been unable to go back to work and therefore may run the risk of being able to receive a paycheck because many of the shops and businesses have had to remain closed at the Rideau Center and elsewhere in Ottawa, just so that they can stay safe. You shouldn't have to choose between being safe and having a job. And that is precisely the dilemma and the ultimatum that the convoy is putting to ordinary Canadians. It's workers in factories across Southern Ontario that are forcing the slowed production. And now we're hearing reports that some may even need to shut down this afternoon because the parts they need are stuck on the other side of the Ambassador Bridge. I've spoken with many community leaders in Windsor, including Mayor Dilkins, including our local MPs, Brian Masse and, I, and Eric Kazmierczyk. I've spoken with other industry leaders uh, in the labor sector, and all of them have said, with a singular voice that those who have gotten into their trucks and who have decided to uh, park them uh, at the exit of the Ambassador Bridge need to go home now. Go home peacefully, go home out of respect for those hardworking families in Windsor who are just trying to put food on the table, who are just trying to get by, who are just trying to make ends meet. To the convoy, you are not helping. You are hurting them. You are hurting Canadians, and you are not above the law. Ici à Ottawa, nous continuons de travailler en étroite collaboration avec la ville pour veiller à ce que la loi soit appliquée et pour encourager les bloqueurs à retourner chez eux. Nous avons eu une autre réunion de table productive avec le maire Watson 
Le chef Slowly et d'autres partenaires municipaux hier, et je sais que le ministre Kribler a déjà parlé un peu de ces progrès que nous avons fait. Notre principal objectif est de veiller à ce que la police d'Ottawa dispose des ressources dont elle a besoin et la GRC s'engage avec elle à trouver les meilleurs moyens pour que ces renforts supplémentaires viennent renforcer le plan de SPO. Um, yesterday, we had a very productive conversation again with Mayor Watson, as well as Chief Slowly. Uh, we are working through the details of their operational plan, and I want to assure those living in Ottawa that the RCMP continue to coordinate very closely uh, with the OPS, as well as the OPP, who have a critically important role to play uh, to ensure that we have all the resources that are required. And again, I just want to underline uh, that we will continue to provide that support as much as we can and where needed. In Alberta, the situation at the Coots border crossing has again deteriorated. In addition to the blockades on Highway 4 at Coots and Milk River, blockaders have now moved closer to the border crossing itself, forcing it to temporarily close. The CBSA is redirecting traffic to the Del Bonita and Carway crossings, where additional resources have been added to deal with the increased traffic. This blockade of Alberta's most important link to the U.S., has already cost the province's economy hundreds of millions of dollars. And the North American agriculture sector is highly integrated with everything from feed to meat uh, to live animals crossing at the border in both directions, and most of it is at Coots. The Coots Sweetgrass Crossing is the only one between Winnipeg and Vancouver with the capacity to handle many of these goods, which support thousands of jobs across Western Canada. The blockade must end there too. As I first announced, the RCMP will be sending additional officers at the request of the government of Alberta. Under Section 9.2 of the Police Service Act, the province can request extra officers from the RCMP in other provinces. And I'm pleased to report that I had a, a conversation with Premier Kenny, Kenny, I beg your pardon, uh, where we were able to communicate that that support would be there uh, for local law enforcement. En fait, au point, Ambassador à Windsor, la circulation reste bloquée pour entrer au Canada tandis que certains camions ont pu entrer aux États-Unis en empruntant d'autres roues en direction du pont. Comme nous l'avons indiqué hier, nous avons déterné le trafic commercial vers la pointe Blue Water à Sarnia et le reste du trafic vers le tunnel Windsor-Detroit. Bien qu'il y ait des temps d'attente plus longs à Sarnia dans l'ensemble, le trafic se déroule sans problème aux deux passages. Nous avons ajouté Ontario's critical manufacturing sector relies on trade between our two countries. We have already heard from auto manufacturers and others that plants could close as early as this afternoon. As you heard, Ministers Blair, Al Gabra, along with other colleagues of ours in the cabinet, continue to engage with our counterparts and stakeholders across the province. We will continue to do everything that we can uh, to provide the resources that are necessary for law enforcement to do their job. Um, we remain very concerned with the situation in the Master Bridge, uh, but we are um, engaging with all of our partners provincially. Um, I will point out that I had a call with Premier Ford earlier today uh, where he committed, and I was grateful for the commitment to have my counterpart, Minister Sylvia Jones, uh, participate in the tri tripartite table, uh, which we have set up and which we are convening on a daily basis so that everyone can be on the same page, so that we can be united and coordinated in our response, so that we can continue to do the business of government, so that we can see the most quick, fast, expeditious, and peaceful resolution of this convoy. Thank you. Merci. Thank you very much. Um, they, we now go to questions. We have about 20 minutes uh, for questions. And so if you want to r raise a question, raise your hand. It will be one question, one follow-up. And the first question will go to Rafi Bujikanian of CBC News. Yes, good afternoon and thanks. I guess all three ministers, you have pointed to a lack of presence by the province of Ontario at the trilateral table. And I'm wondering, could you clarify what is it that you expect them to be doing that they are not? And why is it their responsibility to, to protect the national capital in particular? 
Well, the first thing I want to say is uh, that I had a, a good call with Premier Ford. Um, he reached out and uh, we're thankful for that. And, you know, we I think we both expressed um, a serious concern about the ongoing blockades and uh, the need to um, support law enforcement uh, as much as possible so that they have the tools and the resources uh, to uh, see the uh, very fast and peaceful resolution uh, to uh, the convoy uh, in Ottawa and in Windsor. Um, I know that uh, over the course of a number of, uh, of days that there has been back and forth from uh, both of our teams. Um, and certainly uh, I'm encouraged by the fact that Minister Jones will be participating in the tripartite, uh, which uh, both Minister uh, Blair and I have been engaging with the city with. Um, I think the central message is, is that we all need to be united. We all need to be coordinated. We all need to be sure that we are providing the resources and the tools that are needed. And as uh, local law enforcement here in Ottawa and in Windsor uh, request additional uh, supports, certainly the OPP who have uh, provided support um, here in Ottawa and may be called to do, same, uh, do the same in other parts of the province. Um, it's just critically important that we are in sync on that. And I know that um, uh, I was certainly encouraged by the, the call that I had with Premier Ford, and we look forward to more ongoing collaboration. And I'll turn it over to Minister Blair and Al Gabra if they have anything else to add. Uh, not much more, Marco. We're also very encouraged by uh, Premier Ford's commitment. The responsibility for policing throughout the province of Ontario, including in the city of Ottawa, is is, is a provincial responsibility under the, under the Solicitor General. But we all recognize that we have to work together in this. The impact on Canadians in the, in the city of Ottawa, in neighborhoods and communities and businesses that are being impacted by, by this protest, and now by, frankly, all Canadians, and, and certainly in Ontario, um, the, the blockades, the unlawful blockades that are taking place um, it, at, at, at Windsor and potentially in other uh, parts of, of our border is hugely impactful on, on the people of Ontario. Um, th th there is a policing response to this that is, is, needs, needs our support. Um, we all hope for a, a lawful, peaceful uh, end uh, to, this, to these protests, but we also need them to end because of the impact it's having on so many innocent people. And so we believe it's absolutely important that, that the federal government, the provincial government, and the municipalities in, impacted, we all, we all share a responsibility to, for, to the cell, safety and health of our citizens. We all need to work together. And, and, and I'm, I'm certainly encouraged by, by, by Premier Ford's commitment. Um, and, and, and let me also be clear, the province has been there. I, I'm, I don't want to suggest that we're criticizing that the Ontario Provincial Police from day one has been working with the Ottawa Police Service and with other police services across Ontario. Like I, I've been in Ottawa and I've seen police officers from municipalities across the province as well, who've come to help and 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 we're very grateful uh, for that type of collaboration. Um, it's just that you know the, the police are, are working well together. We need to also ensure that all three orders of government are, are working together because there are a number of, of other aspects that you know that require our action and attention in this matter, and that's what we're all working towards. I'll, I'll add something very quickly. Uh, most, if not all, of the authorities uh, to enforce and uphold the law are within uh, the province's uh, authority, and uh, I've reached out to uh, uh, my colleague, Minister uh, Maruni, and we've been exchanging ideas. Um, uh, I, we're hoping part of those ideas is the enforcement of the Highway Traffic Act uh, against those who are impeding traffic uh, unlawfully. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to uh, uh, to uh, working together on upholding the law and making sure that these blockades end. Okay, thank you very much for all that. And as a follow-up, a couple of days ago at the emergency debate, the Prime Minister said that uh, pandemic restrictions are not forever. Can any of you elaborate on what he meant? Is there a federal plan being discussed to ease out mandates? Yeah, yeah, well, I think, go ahead, Marco. Uh, no, th thanks, Bill. I mean, I, I, I think um, what the Prime Minister uh, said was uh, abundantly clear that we all share the frustration uh, that every Canadian has that uh, here we are two years into the pandemic and uh, wanting to uh, have the ability to go about our, our lives in a way that resembles something that was pre-COVID life and normal. Um, and there have been ups and downs. Uh, there have been moments throughout the pandemic 
where we have eased restrictions. And those decisions have always been made guided by the best available advice that we're getting from public health experts. And of course, uh, going forward, we will continue to listen to the advice that we get from our public health care uh, officials. Um, so despite the ups and downs, um, the, the overall trajectory of this pandemic has been encouraging because um, it's been informed by the best available advice that we're getting um, and that there is a point in the future, that day is coming, when we will uh, be back to life as normal. In the meantime, um, we can all be exhausted about it. We can be fatigued about it. I think we all can relate to that, but that can never be a justification to somebody um, going beyond the boundaries of the law um, and creating an illegal blockade um, and hurting Canadians, which is exactly what is happening right now. And that's just got to stop. Bill? Yeah, just right from the outset of, of the pandemic, you know, we've we've implemented measures that that we believe were the right things to do in order to protect uh, Canadians to slow down the spread of of COVID nineteen. Um, you know, one of the most significant events in in throughout this pandemic was the advent of the vaccines. Um, we've we went we frankly made Herculean efforts uh, to, to procure and to provide vaccines for all Canadians and, and make them available. You know we've also imp imposed additional restrictions, as have the provinces and and even the municipalities have imposed restrictions that they believe were necessary and appropriate to protect the lives and safety of of their citizens. And we've been working full out to to make sure that we had vaccines for for all Canadians. Like let's be really clear um, ab about you know we are talking about the vaccines here. We know that the best way out of this pandemic is to get Canadians vaccinated. It's why we in the provinces and our health uh, professionals right across the country work so tirelessly to make vaccines available and encourage and, and incentivize people in every way to get vaccines because we know vaccines uh, protect people. They, they, they significantly reduce the likelihood of se severe illness and death. And, and so we've been doing that work. And we know that there are some people opposed to that. And they're certainly entitled to their opinion. Respectfully, I believe they're, they're sadly misinformed the science. Like they seem to get their, their evidence from um, the internet rather than from our health professionals. But we, you know, we continue to do everything that is necessary. But I think we've also demonstrated throughout this pandemic that we monitor the, the ongoing situation. We've responded vigorously to the waves as, as, as they have occurred, including the Omicron uh, a wave that, that impacted this country, and that we have been prepared to modify the measures that we, that we impose in, 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 in the context of the circumstances that we're dealing with. Uh, but we have remained firm in our belief that vaccination is, is important for all Canadians. We're gonna continue to, to make sure they're available and to encourage people to do that. And, and unfortunately, um, the, the impact of, of the actions of, of these protesters um, clearly is unlawful, but I, but I think it needs to be recognized the harm that they are doing, the harm that they are doing to individual citizens through their, their, their frankly, many criminal acts, acts of thuggery and, and obnoxiousness that, that they've inflicted upon people of, of Ottawa. And now, they, as a result of their actions, their unlawful actions, to block our highways leading into, into our ports of entry with the United States, they're essentially putting their foot on the on the throat of all Canadians. They're cutting off essential supply lines and goods and services. And, and, and as, as, as my, my colleague and friend, Mr. Algabra, said only a few weeks ago, you know, these, these people were suggesting that that grocery shores, uh, shelves were empty. They were attempting to mislead. And now they're actually attempting to achieve what they, they threatened Canadians with. And, and so it can't be allowed to persist. We are all hoping for a peaceful resolution to these protests, but they need to end. Thank you. Uh, at this point, we've been through one question, a questioner, and uh, we've got eight more people waiting to ask questions, so we'll have to try to pick up the pace a little bit, or if the ministers can stay a little bit longer. The next question goes to Marika Walsh, Globe and Mail. Good afternoon. Thanks for taking our questions. Ministers, Canadians are, are watching this. We are now at two border blockades and 12 days of blockades in Ottawa. And the perception is that the government and law enforcement has no control, that Canada can be taken over by protests and apparently it just is allowed to happen. So how do you respond to that perception? I'll send that to Mr. Mendicino and maybe just one minister can answer to save time. 
Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, my response is very simple. Um, the business of government is continuing. We're in the chamber, we're introducing legislation, we're passing laws, we're focused on getting ourselves out of the pandemic. And for those that are trying to obstruct the work of the business of the government, uh, whether it's federally, provincially, or municipally, um, they're not going to succeed. Um, we have all of the, uh, the resolve to uh, continue to uh, get the job done on behalf of Canadians. Um, they uh, are here uh, in, a, in a manner that is not consistent with the law. And that is why we have turned to law enforcement uh, as a way of uh, trying to uh, disengage uh, the convoy peacefully, quickly, uh, and in a way that is respectful to Canadians. Um, it is unfortunate that in some, uh, I think, misguided effort, uh, they believe they're advancing a, a, a good cause. All they're doing right now is hurting Canadians. Um, they're hurting Canadians by uh, erecting blockades at our ports of entry, be it at Coots or at the Ambassador Bridge in Windsor. And these are people who are, um, these are truckers. And these truckers to 90% are vaccinated. Uh, so they've done their part, and they're trying to move um, the, the the supply chains that are not only uh, keeping people employed, but are putting food and bread on the table. And so um, I, I, my response to you is that we'll continue to do the business of government. But uh, Minister, the, the people are not concerned about the business of government. They're concerned about their business. They're concerned about their daily lives. I don't think it's much comfort to people in Sarnia or Windsor right now that government is continuing. They see lawlessness, you've described it as lawlessness, and yet it appears that all governments at all levels and all policing agencies are completely unable to stop it. It is not quick. It's been almost two weeks in Coots. It's been almost two weeks in Ottawa. And now the most important bridge and border crossing also is taken over. And so again, can you please address, is government in control and are law enforcement in control? And when will people see that? Of course. And the answer is yes. And we are going to continue to provide the resources uh, to law enforcement to do their job. And we have seen progress in Ottawa. Uh, we've seen more enforcement. We've seen tickets issued. We've seen criminal investigations started. Uh, we are seeing things uh, become quieter and calmer. And that is an encouraging sign. And in, at the Ambassador Bridge, uh, we are fully engaged to provide the resources that we uh, can to local law enforcement which means making sure they've got the people, the money, and the supports they need. We trust our law enforcement to do their job. We know they're working very hard, and there will be a restoration of those, of those lanes and those supply chains. They're also redirecting traffic to other ports of entry, which is, I think, another positive sign of our ability to keep supply chains moving. So it's not just about doing the business of government. It's also making sure that the economy turns that the people are still able to do their jobs so that they can earn their wages and put uh, food and bread on the table. And that's what will be singularly resolved to do. Christian Noël, Radio-Canada. Christian Noël, Radio-Canada. Bonjour, merci de prendre nos questions. Hello, thank you for um, taking our I'll questions. I'll ask in English for everybody, but uh, Mr. Mendocino, if you could answer in French. Uh, how long, about the Ambassador Bridge specifically, how long before you ask for an injunction to clear the road? Mais écoute, euh, Christiane, euh, il y a déjà tous les, euh, tous les, tous les autorités euh, dans la loi pour euh, les services de police pour faire euh, le job sur le terrain. Euh, les euh, les, les euh, ASFS travaillent ensemble avec euh, les services de police euh, pour adresser les situations à la pointe d'ambassadeur. Donc, euh, s'il y a euh, un, un autre... Uh, option, par exemple, an, an injunction. Uh, ça, c'est uh, un choix qui, qui peut être uh, exploré par uh, les services uh, de police dans une façon indépendante de le gouvernement. Uh, et on va uh, travailler en, en étroite collaboration avec uh, la province uh, et même avec uh, la ville de Windsor uh, pour chercher des solutions uh, concrètes uh, pour, uh, pour réduire la situation à la pont uh, d'Ambassador. Um, I'll just say in English uh, that the existing authorities uh, already uh, are in place in the law so that law enforcement can do the job. 
what I mean by that is that uh, at their uh, independent discretion, they're able to engage those on the, uh, who are participating in the convoy, uh, can uh, uh, certainly take law enforcement action, as we have seen in Ottawa, as we have seen in Coots, uh, to try to uh, dissipate the convoy there. Um, should they choose to explore other options, including an injunction, uh, that is at their uh, independent discretion. And certainly the courts uh, will, will have the capacity to, uh, to uh, render a decision as they see fit. But from where we sit at the federal level of government, um, our job is not to take those decisions uh, operationally. Our job is to make sure that the CBSA uh, and the local police have all of the resources that they need in conjunction with the province. And as Minister Blair pointed out, um, the responsibility for local police uh, in Ontario is both local municipal uh, authorities as well as the province. Merci, M. Mendocino. En suivi, j'aimerais vous parler du financement qui viendrait de l'étranger de ces manifestations et à Ottawa et au Pont Ambassadeur. À quel point ça vous préoccupe et que pouvez-vous faire? How concerned are you about this and what can we do? Je pense que c'est une, uh, une inquiétude que tout le monde a partagé. Uh, je suis uh, un peu assuré que GoFundMe a arrêté le, la distribution de les contributions, uh, de les, uh, uh, les investissements, les contributions étrangers. Uh, et je sais qu'il uh, y a des autres questions que le comité de sécurité publique uh, dans la Chambre des communes vont étudier dans l'avenir. C'est très important que... Uh, tous les députés uh, fait cette étude uh, avec beaucoup d'attention, pas seulement uh, sur la question de cette uh, manifestation, de cette convoi, mais je pense aussi uh, dans le sens uh, général uh, pour, uh, pour uh, mettre l'attention et le focus uh, sur uh, un enjeu uh, qui touchait uh, sur uh, l'interférence uh, étrangère et même uh, pour la sécurité nationale. C'est un, un enjeu très, très important et uh, je suis uh, très préoccupé comme tout le monde. Ryan Chumulty, National Post. Yeah, hi there, Minister. Um, you know, the city of Ottawa declared a state of emergency on the weekend and asked for 1,800 police officers. I believe what you're telling us this morning is that only today has the provincial government agreed to sit down with you to discuss that request. Do you feel like all layers of government are treating this as the emergency that the city of Ottawa sees it as? Well, my first response to that is that um, certainly from the level of federal government that we have been there to provide support to the Ottawa Police Service. Uh, and again, I wanna thank the RCMP for stepping up with uh, re reinforcements uh, since day one. And as I said earlier today, as a result of some uh, very fruitful conversations that we had with Mayor Watson yesterday and further discussions with the RCMP, more reinforcements are coming, and that is something that should encourage everyone. Um, beyond that, I would say that I know that the OPP has also uh, been lending uh, important resources on the ground to the Ottawa Police Service. So at the, uh, at, at the operational level, I think the lines of communication have, very, have been very strong. And Yes, following a discussion that we had with um, um, the province today and uh, my conversation with Premier Ford, I know that my colleague, uh, Minister LeBlanc, also had a conversation with Premier Ford. Um, we're certainly reassured that there will be political uh, representation from the province on the tripartite uh, that has been set up by the federal government uh, to put sufficient focus and uh, synchronicity uh, in our response uh, to providing uh, support that law enforcement needs to bring about the fast and peaceful resolution of the convoy. I guess just as a follow up then, you know, the the blockade has been going on in Ottawa for 13 days, It's been going on for almost as long in, at Coots in Alberta. Um, are you concerned that the inaction, the inability to resolve these blockades uh, encouraged people to set up a blockade at the Ambassador Bridge, uh, which is now cutting off a quarter of Canada's trade with the United States? Well, I, I want to be clear that I think we all share the concern uh, that the blockades uh, have uh, put uh, pressure on Canadians, are hurting Canadians, are hurting the economy. 
And that's why we need to be uh, very agile in providing the tools and the resources that law enforcement need uh, to address them. I will say that at Coots, uh, that thus far the impact to the economy and supply chains there has been very much minimized thanks to the quick response of both uh, the CBSA as well as the RCMP, who serve as the uh, police of jurisdiction through the, um, the police services agreement that we have with Alberta. And again, here too, uh, I would just um, assure everyone that the RCMP have provided reinforcements to Alberta, which uh, is a tangible uh, contribution from the level of uh, the federal government uh, through the RCMP. And in the Ambassador Bridge, um, you know, look, we are singularly focused on the impacts. You've heard uh, from uh, Ministers Blair and Al Gabra uh, that we need to put a full core press. That's why we need the province of Ontario at the table to show, uh, I think, unity across all levels of government uh, so that we are on the same page, that we are on sync, and that we are providing all of the resources that local law enforcement needs to do their job. But there can be no doubt about the fact that we need to see a fast and peaceful resolution to the convoy because it is hurting Canadians, and that's what we're going to remain uh, singularly focused on. Thank you. Uh, we've, the ministers have agreed to stay 10 additional minutes. I've got five people in the queue. Everyone can do the math. Uh, next question go. Prochaine question, Emily Bergeron. Emily Bergeron. Oui, bonjour. Euh, Monsieur Mendesino, vous avez Mendesino, répété tout à l'heure qu'il y, qu y a plus de renforcement qui s'en vient. Euh, ça veut dire quoi exactement? Là, parce que le maire d'Ottawa demande 1800 agents. Est-ce que ce nombre-là est réaliste? Et si ce n'est pas réaliste, pouvez-vous nous donner un ordre de grandeur de combien d'agents additionnels le pourraient être offerts en, en soutien? C'est une bonne question et ça, c'est exactement euh, le, le discussion euh, qui, euh, qui nous sommes en train d'avancer avec la ville d'Ottawa. Mais encore une fois, il faut respecter les compétences des de, euh, services de police. Euh, tout, euh, toutes les précisions que, que, que vous nous demandons euh, et dans, euh, dans la discussion, des de services uh, des polices uh, entre uh, l'OPS et uh, la GRC, l'OPP, uh, et uh, les détails de le, 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 le prochain uh, ajouté des ressources, uh, nous sommes en train de, de finaliser, de vérifier. Uh, et en, en final, je veux seulement dire que on va ajouter plus des, des officiers et l'exact nombre. On va, on va garder uh, pour protéger uh, les sensibilités, uh, les sensibles de, de les opérations sur le terrain. Vous dites que c'est en train d'être finalisé. À quand on pourrait s'attendre à une réponse à cette demande spécifique-là? Est-ce que ce serait aujourd'hui, demain? Bien sûr, c'est une estimation, mais à quoi vous attendez? J'espère aujourd'hui. Je sais que le GR s'est parlé euh, euh, maintenant, euh, toujours, euh, avec, euh, avec l'OPS. Et tout le monde comprend que c'est une situation avec beaucoup d'urgence. Donc, j'espère euh, de que plus de possible. Merci. Uh, prochaine question, Mylène Kreit. Mylène de Kreit, from La Presse. Hi, I uh, just want to make sure I understand properly. Um, so no member of the government of Ontario has been participating in the trilateral table up to today, correct? Uh, we, we have every expectation that they will be at the tripartite today. We had it set up uh, the day before yesterday, and uh, in the meantime, Minister Blair and I have been in contact with uh, Minister Jones, but Minister Blair may wish to add. Yeah, just very briefly, no, they have not been at the table for the first two meetings. We have uh, indications from them today that they'll be joining us uh, at the next meeting. When you say uh, no one is above the law, I think this is certainly not the impression that people are getting from these blockades that are happening in three different locations right now. So how can you say that nobody is above the law? when it looks like actually they are? Uh, because it, I think we've all got something to say here, but if, if, if I may, I, I believe the, law, the, the rule of law has to be upheld. Um, it is the responsibility of the police to do that. And we have, um, we'll ensure that the police have the resources they need uh, to, to uphold the law and, and keep the peace. And we, we've seen many instances of, of law breaking here and, and, and we will not direct the police, but we certainly have every expectation that they'll do their job. 
Yeah, and, and and I would just add to that that there there is an abundance of uh, of, of evidence that that the law is being upheld. Um, you have seen charges laid. You have seen tickets issued. You have seen uh, the announcement that there are ongoing criminal investigations, and as a result of that, you are I think seeing something that. Uh, is a, a more peaceful and calmer, a normal state of affairs uh, here in Ottawa. It's certainly a lot quieter than it was this past weekend. Um, there's been progress that has been made. That is in large uh, thanks to uh, the good work of local law enforcement. So what we mean when we say that no one is above the law is that, yes, uh, as an individual, if you choose to go out and break the law, you can do that, but there will be consequences. And those consequences uh, are, are a necessity of living in a society that is based on a certain set of rules by which we all agree to, uh, to, to follow. And so the process uh, of, of that law enforcement has seen, uh, I think, um, us making headway here in Ottawa. And I'm optimistic that we will make headway in the other areas where the blockades have emerged. Thank you. Uh, Stephanie Ha, CTV. Hi there, thanks for taking our questions. Um, what concerns do you have about who is funding this movement? You know, we're seeing it's getting a lot of support from far right American influencers. Some people say that the scale of crowdfunding is unprecedented. Can any be, anything be done to address this, especially when we see public safety is at risk? Well, I'll, I'll say that I, I think we're all concerned about the very uh, rapid um, number of contributions that were made and the sheer size of the contributions to the GoFundMe platform. I'm uh, relieved, as I think we all are, that GoFundMe put a stop to the distribution of those uh, funds to the convoy. Uh, clearly, they uh, ha had uh, looked carefully and with meticulous detail at who was contributing, and I think also examined the very important question about what those funds could be used to do. And if they felt as though, and clearly they, they must have, otherwise they would not have issued a statement, they felt those funds could be used to advance uh, the, the the cause of the convoy and certainly the statements uh, uh, that were made by the leaders of the convoy, that that could undermine public safety or otherwise uh, can be, be lent towards uh, some activity that could undermine our security, uh, that they should put a stop to it. So they did that. I will also say that uh, the Public Safety Committee uh, of the House of Commons will be studying this issue. They'll undertake that work uh, independently of, of the government, but I think it's a very timely and urgent issue that does require a thought and attention and also uh, perhaps some uh, additional action on the part of all of us to be sure that, that we can't see um, any kind of contributions come in to undermine our public safety or our national security. And if I just may add, I, I think we're all concerned about the lack of transparency and therefore accountability for the source of these funds and how they're being used. Okay, hey, and uh, separately, um, once this is all over, is it time to look at whether Wellington Street, which um, where Parliament Hill is, whether Wellington Street should be handed over to the federal government so the feds can have more control over the Parliament Hill precinct so we can avoid situations like this in the future? I think that's a really good question, Stephanie. And as I've said previously, I think following um, the resolution of this convoy, we need to take away a number of lessons as to um, you know the, the, the way in which uh, there was a response uh, to the convoy, uh, including uh, the the way that Wellington Street fits into uh, the parliamentary precinct. Um, right now, our immediate concern is to be sure that um, that that law enforcement has all of the support they need to disengage the convoy as quickly and as peacefully as possible. And that's uh, that the, the point of the update today is to just really reassure everyone that from the level of federal government that reinforcements are being provided in Coots, in Ottawa, and that we are very focused on the serious situation in Ambassador, and that there is a full court press here uh, with uh, the tripart table that Minister Blair and I uh, are convening and that Minister Al Gabra is also working on with his counterparts so that we can uh, respond uh, as, as quickly as possible. Alex Ballengal, Toronto Star, gets the last question. Hi, thanks very much. Um, just, I, I just hearing you guys talk about this, you know, Minister Blair, you say that this is like putting a foot on the throat of Canadians. We're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars to the Alberta economy hundreds of millions of dollars of goods per day over the Ambassador Bridge. It sounds like a, a serious, I think, emergency for the nation, the way you guys are describing it. So why have you, you know, the federal government's still playing a supporting role in the response here. At what point do you guys shift that 
and try and play a leading role? Is there anything you can do? The Emergencies Act, is that being considered? Because the way you describe it sounds very, very serious and great. Alex, if I may, first of all, let me say I believe it is very serious and, and potentially grave. The, the cutting off of the, 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 the essential movement of, of goods and services across the Ambassador Bridge is already having a huge impact on, on, on Canadian industry and Canadian workers. You know, nearly 5,000 people were sent home early from one of our Windsor factories yesterday as a direct result of the criminal actions of, of these people engaged in this blockade. I also want to be very clear. All three orders of government have a responsibility, and that's why we're all working together. Um, we, we know that 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 the, the, the law is being broken, and and the police have a responsibility here uh, to 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 restore order and to, and to uphold the law. And at the same time, we I want to also acknowledge how very challenging that is, and that's why we're all working hard together uh, to do what is necessary. And I also want to commend the efforts of other such as CBSA, who've, who've really been doing extraordinary work trying to get those essential goods and services um, into, into the country uh, while the police you know, work hard to do what we re require them to do. Okay, and just to, I, I don't know if I can speak in a follow-up here, but um, my understanding is that there's, a, there's a, a new logistics camp in Ottawa being set up on federal land down on Bronson Avenue, south of the downtown. Um, I'm wondering if you guys know about that. Did the federal government approve that? Is that is that something that has a green light from you guys? And what do you think of what's going on there? Is there plans to go in and prevent that from happening? Because obviously there's concerns about uh, the reestablishment of sort of a support network for the blockades. I saw a few uh, social media tweets about it. I would just simply say that any structures that uh, aren't lawfully there, uh, you know, we have uh, flagged with law enforcement and there has been progress made and taking uh, a number of those structures down, uh, particularly at Confederation Park. And uh, clearly uh, we're going to trust uh, uh, the OPS as supported by the RCMP and OPP and others uh, to address those situations as they come up. Um, our position today is to uh, demonstrate uh, the clarity with which um, we will continue to provide the support, the tools, the resources uh, that police need uh, to enforce and uphold the law so that Canadians can get their lives back. Um, we, we will continue to work on that day and night. And, uh, and I know that uh, my colleagues, uh, Minister Blair and I will be having another call again, I believe uh, later on today, right, Bill? And uh, and uh, we'll we'll keep at it. And I know Minister Algabra as well will be engaging with Minister Mulroney. Thank you very much, and thank you to the ministers for staying long enough for to allow us to get through the queue so that everybody got their questions answered. Uh, this ends this press conference. Sur, sur met fin, sur conférence de presse. Merci, bonjour. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.